I'd like to do today is get your version. And here we go uh, with Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, God, yeah. I just remembered. This was Barry Diller. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Kurt and I are sitting here today, and the first scene that you're seeing that's up was uh, an additional scene on our movie requested by Barry Diller. Actually, he had a hand in writing it, and he was concerned that your character wasn't heroic enough. <laughs> I remember his reaction to the movie after he saw it. Oh, oh, I don't, I don't oh. think he's too good. I don't uh -uh. think he does great stuff. Uh -uh. So, well, you got, you saw it, you got it. He didn't, he didn't get it. <laughs> he didn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't get care it. to get it. He didn't get it. <laughs> so this whole sequence we shot uh, uh, after production, basically to, uh, for the American audiences, I think, uh, get your character. To be, to be heroic. <laughs> this was the time of Rambo, though, you know. I think that's what they expected. <laughs> they expected you to be Stallone, right? Well, I remember you and I talking about this and, and saying that he could be the, he could be the, we would flip-flop the leading man and the sidekick, and the sidekick would act like the leading man, and the, you got and, the, and the, and the, the leading man would, would act like the sidekick, and, but not know it. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's bizarre how no one got that. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> He just wasn't doing too good. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> but once we get finished with this scene, uh, then we're going to get into the movie proper. Then it started, we started shooting our screenplay with you driving into San Francisco. Right. And this was originally based on a Western. It was originally a yeah. Western where a cowboy rides into San Francisco. Right. And he does the same basic thing. He gets involved. I think they stole his horse or something. Yeah. And so he has to go into this underworld. Now... Was this originally a Western in its writing, or was it? Yes, it was. It, it was, was originally a Western period. And uh, oh, you were talking about. Remember, you were talking about gun, not uh, Diablo. Uh huh. El Guns Diablo. Of El Diablo. Uh -huh. Remember, uh -huh. you were talking about El Diablo uh -huh. times. I got something I think is kind of. Uh -huh. And this, but it was modernized by uh, W. D. Richter, Rick Richter. Right. And uh, now we have it modern day. And his 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 rationale was, well, look, Rosemary's Baby worked because it was modern day. Why wouldn't this? Right. And he had, had he done Buckaroo Banzai? Yeah, yeah he, he, had, he, had. he had. He had done that. He was, uh, I don't know what he's doing now, but he was, he was pretty much the toast of the town there for a while. He I was. remember that. He was. He was. And, uh, he was a good writer. He is a good writer. Yep. He wanted, yep. again, like everybody else, wanted to be a director. Yep. Except for you. You don't Except want to be for a me. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the opening uh, sequence. Actually, the movie should begin. Now, I had sequence. to learn how to drive that truck. And how did no, you, I, don't, I didn't drive it here. I don't remember driving it here. But I remember you said to me, now, you're actually going to have to drive this truck around Chinatown. And, you can, and I don't want you tearing the set apart, so you better, <laughs> you better learn how to do this. Now, you're supposed to be playing a truck driver, uh, Jack Burton. He has a pretty big mouth on him. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and in, in a sense, you know, what people are talking about nowadays is that we were a little ahead of our time. It, it seems like in every one of the movies that we do together... <laughs> That people get it later. <laughs> you noticed that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I kind of say to myself, "Well, that's the way kind of the way it goes, I guess." <laughs> and uh, we were kind of ahead of the curve on this whole uh, 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 like Chinese and uh, kung fu uh, mysticism, which yeah. is now very popular. And yeah, I remember you talking about doing the all-out yeah. great. Kung fu, yeah. uh, martial arts, yeah. ghost story, I mean, ghost just, rapping pull it in the yeah, it pull it out. <laughs> yeah. And it basically is is kind of a comedy. Although I think a lot of people at the time really didn't didn't get that. They were expecting maybe uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or they expected they were expecting maybe Harrison yeah, Ford. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your character was was. <laughs> I remember you. I remember you, when I heard the music for this for the first time, uh -huh. and your voice was so low. Oh, I thought yeah. it was. I said, man. Yeah, it was a great sound you had on that. Doesn't seem like I'm. Uh, I can sing that low, but actually, I, I, yeah. I can. And, I love uh, this. So we're now um, we're coming into uh, supposedly uh, San Francisco Chinatown. This was actually shot uh, uh, down in, in downtown L.A. in a set, and uh, we oh, had yeah. the rain towers going, and uh, you know it's the the stuff. And here you come driving in, and I'm, yeah. See now there's some. I'm terrified that you're going to hurt somebody here. Not only you're going to hurt someone, but you're going to break the truck. And it was early, early oh, in the shooting. Oh boy, oh boy. And Who was the production designer? He was great. That's John Lloyd. John he, Lloyd. He right. also did the the thing with us. And he was great. Yeah, he's terrific. Did a great job on this. After we finished with this set, didn't Janet Jackson 
Use that set for... I've heard this a number of times. You use that set for some videos, and other people did, or portions of it, and, and it's also still the being look. Used. It's still being used. It's right now, uh, we finished, we finished uh, uh, in Big Trouble in Little China, we finished shooting. Most of our interiors were built on stage in 20th Century Fox, okay? And after we'd finished shooting, I saw Michael Jackson Michael walking Jackson. around, looking at, it. looking at it, and here comes Janet Jackson's video in the city. Right. Same right. set. Right, same set. It may still that. be there as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't know. It was a great set. Oh, yeah. I mean, he really, really built a great set. But I remember the, the sort of whole look, uh, the color and everything at that time. Uh, the videos just took that on. Like oh, crazy. yeah. Now, you're uh, playing with Dennis Dunn here, who plays Wang Chi, and you guys are gambling away. This was uh, Heaven and Earth, or Pe what is it, Pi Gal? Pi Gal, wasn't it? Pi Gal. There's your director. <laughs> and there he goes. There he is right there. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time doing this movie, and it, it was it's a bizarre experience to uh, to have a film that you feel so good about. Yeah. And at the time when it was released, I didn't realize that they were only they only spent at the time their corporate policy was three million dollars in advertising for the opening weekend. This is three. nineteen when was this? Nineteen eighty six. Three million. Three million. We bucks. had three million. And I remember one of the executives <laughs> Isn't it great you can talk about this stuff now? <laughs> and, so, and what's great is that the, forever, it's forever you can talk about it. And uh, one of the executives said, well, we're going to put these big ads in the paper every day, big banner ads. I looked at these things. I remember that. I remember, who is this guy? And I remember, that, first of all, the drawing, first of all, I don't think anybody knew me. Second of all, if they would have recognized me, you couldn't from the picture, and it didn't mean anything. I remember the, the ads were, who is this? Or where is he going? And it's like, yeah, who, like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> who gives a shit? <laughs> who gives a shit? I don't know who it is, and I don't care. And I can remember that about a week before the movie, some people said to me, don't you have a movie coming out? Oh, uh, didn't you and John oh, do a movie? And I said, yeah, painful. it's coming out like within a week. And they said, well, where, where, they can't find it. Couldn't find it. It was, uh, it was pretty. <laughs> it I was want to point weird. out to you that you had a pretty nice looking hero during this particular period. This yeah, is your, yeah, yeah. look at that. Isn't that nice? <laughs> this is very nice. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I Kind loved, of an 80s uh, hockey. Oh, well, hockey it was, it was. It, it, <laughs> you know, I loved, uh. I love your performance in this. Of course, my favorite performance is still Captain Ron, but <laughs> I think second to That's, that. Second to that is this. <laughs> this was one of my favorites to do because we had so much fun. Oh, I, it was a blast. I, I just, it, it was, was a blast time. doing it. The fun of, of making the film is, I, I, I think, reflected in the, in the movie. And we'll get uh, to it towards at the end, but I remember uh, when you, you said, you know, now at the end of this movie, because of who this guy is, He's not going to be involved in a lot of this stuff. We got to think of something. We got to come up with a reason. But we didn't. We didn't back off of it. I, I thought that was great. And to do some. Well, see, of the stuff that's what the kind of actor you are. You're oh yeah, afraid. yeah. I didn't. You're know. not so afraid at all. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. And a lot of guys, you know, you work with them, and uh, they have their their egos to protect, and they're not. They're not. They're afraid of taking risks. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. They're afraid of looking dumb, right? Yeah. They're afraid of. They're afraid of, of looking bad. Yeah. yeah. I, well, that, that's what we tried. We tried. We wanted to have a guy here that was uh, and not it, quite as sharp as he thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> and he, th he thinks he's a whole lot more capable yeah. than he is. He has a big swagger to him. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's really useless. He's out of it. He's <laughs> completely out of it. Out of it. <laughs> completely out of it. We shot this, uh, as I recall, Kurt, we shot this in the fall and uh, up into the winter of 84. Five, I believe. And okay. That's my recollection of it. We okay. came out in 86. We actually shot Christmas. We shot around Christmas. That's right. I remember, remember that? that big picture. I remember that we did take the big picture for Life magazine. Yep. There was that open yep. spread there, and uh, that was fun having really? everybody in that shot. That, that was a good set, too. Um, now, he was a nice guy, Dennis. Dennis was terrific. I haven't seen him. I saw him a couple times since then, but I haven't seen him in the live. He's, He's been working. He worked on right. a TV series for years and years. Oh, really? Yeah, he did. Right. And well, he's he doing was, great. He he's really he's nice uh, he's got a kid. He's married, and he's he's pretty happy. Yeah, oh, he he was a good guy. And the two of you did real good together. It was it was really interesting. Yeah, real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, uh, uh, I got really heavily into the. I just love kung fu movies when I was when I was a kid and when I was growing up. <coughs> and I saw a whole lot of films that that I dug, well, not just Bruce Lee movies. But these crazy ones. They make yeah, these you, crazy damn films that are that are. You kind of got out the pile of. I did. Of, of stuff, didn't I did. you? And you looked, looked at the really good stuff. All of it. I looked at all Because you had every top 
guy on uh -huh. the show. I remember uh -huh. that. At the time, these were the top guys. And uh, we added a little bit of everything to it. We start off, this particular scene starts off just kind of like an action scene. Okay, it's basic, yeah. it's real. Yeah. Then we right. end up with people flying through the air sword fighting. Now, I just saw a little bit of, not the whole thing, but I saw a little bit of... Uh, Crouching, oh, hidden, it's awesome. hidden, it's hidden awesome. crouching tiger, it's hidden awesome. dragon. They're flying around on wires. And but uh, 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 some of that stuff that you did in this movie, I didn't have. Uh, the, was, the, you, you didn't the, have that. that. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. they have a sword fight on top of some trees. They right. go around rooftops. Yeah. They're using this thirty foot crane that moves on a track to yeah. haul the actors around. Yeah, right. Uh, can you imagine you want a crane like this? Yeah, no, I mean, I'd love it. This is Kim Cattrall, who I think is just a fabulous actress and a great comedian. I really love her in this said, part. I was just telling you a minute ago, I ran into her recently in New York, and she's so, such a, a big uh, hey. smash with uh, Sex in the City. And uh, it's great to see that. Oh, yeah. It's great to see that. She was, uh, uh, came in at the time, and uh, she and Kate Burton, I told every, all the actors, look, this is a comedy, guys. Let's yeah. don't play this. Yeah. Uh, Keep that in the back of your head. Let's remember that. Let's don't play it too. Uh, there's nothing dire going on here. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> look at this guy. He hasn't got a clue what's going on. I'm not going to quit. She's looking for the girl with the green eyes. That's right, who's about to get kidnapped. Uh, this movie, strangely enough, found its audience on... Uh, in home video, yeah, people started to love it, and they they watched it. Well, it's fun to run into people today. I you can always uh, oh, yeah. tell somebody's sense of humor by if they, if like, they this like this movie or, movie or not. Or not yeah. And and I, I think of, of this is one of those movies that of all the movies I've worked on, they love they either love this or they never saw it. They never saw it, and they wouldn't get it. They, if would, they, did. And they, would, they know, wouldn't get it. But uh, now all these years later, um, they just there are some people who just. This is tops on their list. I know. They really love it. And I, I, it's fun to talk with them about it. Now, that's Jeff Amata there who's yeah. pulling those knives out. He's been my stunt coordinator ever he, since ever, this movie. Ever since then. And he and I have uh, just finished a film together. How did you find him for this? How did you get a hold of Jeff for this? He uh, came in. Uh, he just came in yeah. and played a part. And then he suddenly began to come behind the camera and say, Does that look good enough there? Yeah. Can we do that better? He's great. And, uh, he hasn't changed very much either. Last time I saw him, he looked no. the same. Well, you know, it pisses <laughs> yeah, me off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one who's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, it is fun now to look back on these, because I didn't, at the time, there was none of this going on. Where you Not at all. There wasn't this at all. You'd done, and, I, and you and I were just young guys having fun, and I, you know, we, there was no thought of looking back. And so it's really interesting now how things have changed. Uh, the technology has allowed us to do all this. We get to sit here and watch a movie that we made, damn, 14, 15 well, I remember this years shot. ago. Yeah, remember now, that? you remember Now, you shot this? <laughs> remember, how'd you do this? Because well, I was trying to figure it out at the time, and I couldn't. So, <laughs> so I said, John, so what do I do here? When just the, just, just get out of the way. <laughs> when the car comes at you, I had you guys, we did it in reverse, and I had you guys act backwards. Right. We acted so we backwards. The, That's the, what it was. the camera close enough, and you guys did great. We acted yeah, backwards. Brilliant. This came natural for me. <laughs> Now, the sequence we're seeing now is all shot uh, uh, process. That's all rear screen back there. And actually, I was very impressed with how, how it looks. It looks very good. That, big, all that uh, stuff has progressed so Puma, much. Look at that thing. It has. And nowadays, uh, you can see it. they do it digitally, and it's amazing. Yeah. Just amazing what you can do. Thank you, Jack. Now we're into the real Chinatown, and uh, we're starting to get into our set, and the first big... Uh, Kind of bizarre fight. There's Victor Wong, who we saw earlier, who is a, quite a character. When you were doing this, because I remember on the other ones on Escape, and when, spent, when we did Elvis, you were very, very well prepared. Wouldn't be the only word. I mean, you you really knew what you were gonna do. You really knew. And I'm looking at this now, and I'm realizing how many how many different shots there are. Were you um, were you pretty much doing what you had in your mind at that time or were you finding things more on this show or both not? both, both. I, and i i realized trying to plan this movie out see storyboards to me are helpful but boy you can't get locked into them because it looks like it looks phony yeah and a lot of this movie i discovered by you guys the actors just it's what you guys are doing mm -hmm. that makes it that makes it work and on these uh, locations looking around and finding stuff that you yeah. liked and and uh, we cut this movie extremely tight. This is one of the few films where the tempo is so fast right. yeah. 
that I wanted just everything to be just right up to it. So in, in terms of the yeah. action, no, no leisurely moments. No air. No air at and all. As I remember you talking to us about <laughs> um, in terms of our acting to really Howard Hawks pop it. really yep. pop it, really pop go. It. Get up and go. And uh, now we and drive uh, on location here into the the set that you were referring to earlier. This is there it, it here. Is. Yeah. Now we're on the set, right? That's it. Set. Uh, 20th Century Fox, we've got the little fog in there, and that truck, which just barely fit through there. Just barely. I actually believe you drove it. I, I was talking to, was it, Casino was on this, uh -huh. and uh, I remember him talking. And uh, Dick Warlock was on it, too. And Warlock was, oh, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was just big enough for you to drive that truck from one door of the stage I, I can to the remember other. that you had to put it almost on rails, because uh, you had, it was two inches. Yep. I mean, it was a two, yep. absolutely two inches <laughs> looking like this right now. And like everything else, when you can't pan the camera mm. too high because uh, there's nothing up there. Yeah, yeah didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the man we'll behind, just play it here. The man behind the wheel <laughs> may have had something to do with that. He's got John, a, that's as far <laughs> as I can get. <laughs> heavy on the hammer. This was our first uh, uh, kind of real big fight. And I remember one of the problems the studio had which we saw in the dialogue kind of looping was, who are the good guys and the bad yeah. guys? Well, the whole point of it all was you didn't. to kind of be confusing because yeah, you like, you're yeah. in the eyes of Jack Burton, Jack, who yeah. has no eye. Plus, does that guy right there look like a good guy? See, this was the, the interesting thing for me, talking with uh, you and Dennis about this stuff, because I was the greenhorn, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to have a, green, a, a normal greenhorn. So uh, Yeah, you were it. I was the, I was, so you had to be a bravado <laughs> greenhorn. You were it, and... Uh, all the guys in this fight were, were martial artists, artists in their own rights, okay? And These they, guys were phenomenal. Everybody kicked some butt here to, yeah. in, during this whole thing. And uh, I remember that guy. Yeah, right. Gerald. Yeah. <laughs> and he pulls his, yeah. his knife, yeah. <laughs> which he makes a little bit of use of later in the film. Actually gets one thing off gets by accident. <laughs> What well, we got? Machine guns. Well, then, then, after all this gunfire, then they really get serious. They start fighting yeah. hand to hand. <laughs> yep. This yep. Is yep. This was a. This was probably the longest fight that we did. This was, took the most pieces. We we really worked on this. There's a lot of uh, a lot of close ups. <laughs> a lot of work. Pretty good today. Yeah, it does, it? Yeah. Not too it's bad. Fun to watch. Now things get uh, now things get serious. Now that gunfire is over with. They come and step out and start to get <laughs> to get real serious. And I suppose we could have, Kurt. We could have had you trained to do a few of these moves. <laughs> Can you see we yourself? talked about that. We said, now does he does know he, this stuff? We said, no. He's he does, we said, no, he's a cowboy. He's just a swinger. He's and he's not in their league. And that's probably what. Uh, I think that's what people enjoy about that character. They, they love it or they don't love it. Yeah, they say, yeah, "Where is yeah, it?" You yeah, know, where I come, you. I come to see Kurt Russell. And, you know, I've he's seen. He's not him. doing anything. What's he doing here? <laughs> he's, he's sitting in this truck. <laughs> well, you got these guys. <laughs> oh, well. But that was the the commitment we made to it. It was yeah. actually in the script. I mean, that was the script. That was the script they bought. <laughs> that they bought. That they offered to both you and I. You and know, I thought maybe they, I think they saw something, a different movie. Maybe. I believe they did. I never forget this, though. I, this was the, I remember when we did the junket for this. And uh, I've never been on a movie, I had never been on a movie up until that point and have never been on one since then, where so many of the junket guys, you know, the critics and right. the, the reporters, I'll bet 80% of them said to me, so how does it feel to know that when this comes out, it's going to be the biggest movie of the year, and I was I was getting kind of like, hey, you know, yeah. you know, well, you know, I was, I was getting well, like, you know how oh, gee, are. I, you know, well, I think I think we did our best, and 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 it was fun, and it's different. Well, the, but the remember the the uh, screening, audience screening numbers were huge. Uh -huh. They were ninety seven percent or uh -huh. something. They were absolutely uh -huh. sure, surefire, oh, they massive. It. They hit. had it. Oh yeah. And this then I it. kept waiting to see ads and things, <laughs> and it just didn't happen. It's like, what happened here? Well, oh well, God! Well, it was weird. That was the that was the summer of aliens. Aliens. Yeah. Aliens. And you know, it just goes to show you—you you never know what a what a film's going to do, no matter what the numbers are on it beforehand. I think they're actually a lot better with that today. I mean, I think. Do you think? I think they're so accurate now that, and they're and marketing has become 
Don't you think marketing's become they the, do? They're the really game? good at that now. That's what yeah. that's what they should they should, they figure out where the audience is and yeah. they go for it. They and target they go for it. it. Yeah, they're a little bit smarter yeah. than they were in those days. Yeah. But. Now we uh, introduce uh, rain and thunder and lightning, and I believe the Carter Wong comes cannonballing out of here first. There he goes. Yeah, Carter was an interesting Carter. guy. Yeah, Carter Wong. He was the real deal. He kind of, he, yeah, he. I remember seeing him a couple times with his shirt off, and kind of going, "Man, this is natural." <laughs> he trained the the Hong Kong police force. Oh, he he did. <laughs> now, did you did he just come in? Did he just yeah, he was a big, uh, he was a big martial arts star in China. He'd done a whole lot of movies over there. Yeah. He was one of the biggest, and he read for me. He couldn't, you know, he really couldn't speak the language yeah. too well, and he had a really no. sweet voice. Yeah. That was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he rides a lightning bolt down. And this is uh, Peter. Oh, yeah. Peter Kwan was rain. Peter Kwan was rain. This is lightning. James. Pax, oh, James Pax, yeah. Who I saw as a model, as, as like modeling and, and that kind of, because he's a really handsome yeah. kid. Yeah. Bullets do not no. penetrate. <laughs> and I, I, you know, the audience is either you go, here you yeah. go with this yeah. stuff, yeah, right now. or, or time you to say, uh-oh, <laughs> what is this? I invented this little move here. That I'm was gonna... great. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> they all said to me, what is this? <laughs> this is great stuff. Oh, they kept pull out the heavy, uh, the heavy yeah. artillery. <laughs> oh, it's Little funny. Elvis there. It's funny. Elvis packs. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> yeah, we got to go now. <laughs> and now you're about to, uh, they kind of fly up out of the way, and then you're about to encounter Lopan uh, for the first time in his Mandarin outfit. We got a lot of heat from uh, some of the... Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, I've learned over the years that it's not always the uh, oh. the right wing that uh, comes and tries to sense you. Sometimes it's the left. It's, the left. it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? What, now, what were they hammering? Well, the Asian uh, the, the Asian uh, community was pissed off at me because I was white, and you weren't. And I, if I was, weren't, uh, if, you weren't Asian, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, and I was making a movie. Well, about, should have known better than that. And they, they said we were using the, the terrible stereotypes, the... Uh, yeah, because you know I mean? Asians shouldn't have light coming out of their mouths. Right. <laughs> but the idea was, oh, God, this is, goes back to Fu Manchu and all those terrible things, and we want, you know, where are the doctors and lawyers in the movie that show... <laughs> but I thought it was so cool that we... That, that, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen an American movie with the... Uh, the, the, the roles reversed in the beginning. Never. The lead guy Never. in this movie was Dennis Dunn. He was the lead guy. He knew all the stuff. He knew all the uh, kung fu. He knew the he knew the ter the terrain. He was the man of New Indians. And uh, Jack, the uh, American, well, didn't yeah. know anything. Yeah. I mean, he was he thought he did. Yeah, he, he thought did. he knew, but he was completely out of it. I mean, I was the buffoon, so I would think that they would have you would have taken but, that. But I don't think uh, I don't think they saw it that way. And. Yeah. Um, all the way through to the to the movie's release, I mean, they were they were honest. They they thought that we were uh, exploiting them, and it was like you know Uncle Tom stuff. We were doing all that old stuff, and uh, I, that was the first time I'd ever encountered that. I'd never encountered that before yeah. ever. Right? Yeah. It was a shock to me. You had no idea like it was me? coming. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, especially with the, I know because you me? were interested in upgrading uh, that, this whole. You loved the whole. You uh, loved uh, them. So. You loved that whole world, the fascination. You were, fa you were fascinated oh, yeah. with it. So I had to, you know, I well, I have to have my consciousness raised, I guess. So I talked to the actors. I said, well, guys, what do you think? I mean, what am I doing wrong? No, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. There's nothing to do. No. So that wasn't that wasn't pleasant. I guess I wasn't. Uh, okay, I just thought of something. Yeah. See the, the moccasins I got on? Uh-huh. Just last, this Christmas? Uh-huh. Uh, we walked by that store in Aspen and got Wyatt some. He's having some right? moccasins made. Right? Yeah, and I said, he said, Dad, don't you have some of these moccasins? And I said, Yeah, I wore them in a movie once. Now that's a pretty nice little T-shirt you had on there. Oh, oh yeah, I remember we found that. Uh, how did that, that work? Was I don't remember. Uh, that, that was that a T-shirt that uh, April Ferry found that she actually found, and then she ran some copies. Really? Off. They've been fighting for centuries. What does that mean? Huh? China is here. I don't even know. I remember this this scene to my shock was was uh, and I don't know why this should happen, but I remember shooting away at this scene and being almost done with it and congratulating myself until 
Dean Cundy, the director of photography, said, we haven't shot the other direction yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> I could have sworn we did. I thought we did Really? <laughs> was one of my big shocks <laughs> as a director. <laughs> my God, what is wrong with me? Oh, man. <laughs> and this was a lot of, there's actually a lot of dialogue in this scene. Yeah, and it this was, was played at, at rapid fire. Yeah. I recently did a, <laughs> uh, I did one day on a, picture uh, that uh, Bob Gale, who was Bob Zemeckis' right, partner, right. Uh, was getting his opportunity to direct, and I did one day, and it was the most dialogue I've had since this movie. Is because, that right? Yeah, because after this movie, um, just ended up doing a lot of movies where I didn't have a lot to say. Well, I think they finally said, you know, don't give him a lot to say. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> He's not too bad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I remember this was this was a mouthful. Who were you playing when, with all this dialogue? Well, like a, I had, I was a... Uh, I was a, a, a the picture is uh, internet six internet no interstate sixty I think I don't know the title of the picture anyway I I uh, I'm a ponytailed cop libertarian cop in oh a town that legalizes drugs oh yeah that's perfect and for you so that's that's perfect, no problem man. at all so <laughs> it was like, you're there it was like yeah I, 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 it was uh, you know do what you want to do. Oh, someday we have to get into politics and let you speak. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, oh, we'll, so we got to do, yeah. For the audience. If you oh. and I ever did oh, a, a real hilarious. politically oh. charged thriller. Oh, oh wouldn't yeah. That, wouldn't that be fun? I mean, yeah. With all sides. Just retreat oh, yeah. it. And just let it rip. Let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic. It's you thought this had a hard time finding an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord, Lord! Uh, Kim, is, is, is you and Kim are now introduced to each other, basically again. Yeah. Join Lem Lee. And this was um, this guy was fun. Donald Lee. Donald Lee. That was terrific. He was great. He was terrific. He was great. You can't get enough of me. Huh. He was. So we shot. This is again right. Uh, this this set is right inside that uh, that same uh, interior uh, uh, city. It's uh, right down, uh, right built into the set. And, there we was shot one of so my, much of this on, think, on the interior. It, it, yeah, so much of it. I remember one of my favorite lines. I think is in this movie of the of the movie. I thought it was really, a, really a Jack, a real Jack Burton moment here, where he says, "Wait a minute, I feel a little left out here. I'm an outsider." Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. Here it is. A little like an outsider. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a terrific character. It was, it was really fun. fun. And I gotta get—I just gotta give you the credit for being having the courage to do that kind of thing again. I know I'm repeating myself, but you don't realize. I mean, believe me when I tell you how many actors—they just well, get scared. They get—they get scared, but they're not. Well, they're, they think that they think that people will see them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the way Barry Tiller saw me in this yeah. movie. He said, I remember at the end of the movie, he said, "I don't get it. He's not that good at what he does." Oh my well, God. yeah. Um, oh. But I remember, I remember being impressed with how fast Dennis and Kim Cattrall could talk. Mm -hmm. They were so good at it. Yeah, Kim was, and Kim and Dennis, Kim especially, could really rip that dialogue. Going. Rip it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, there was, there was an interesting thing. We're having, a, at this particular time, we're having a, a whole deal with the Writers Guild in, in Hollywood. It'll probably be solved by the time that everybody's listening to this. But they want their writers to be on the sets. Wait a minute now. You're talking about now? Right, right in this moment. They this want is... their creative rights for the writers. And for the writer to be on the set. And in the rehearsals. And they have to be, we have to be paid to be there, so there's no changes done with them. They, they're kind of take, they want to be everywhere. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, I think writers in the rehearsals is not a bad idea. I think a writer on the set is probably going to slow things down well, a little bit. Well, beyond that, uh, in this particular movie... Uh, Richter, Rick Richter came to the rehearsals, and for some reason he didn't like Kim and started rewriting her character. Oh, really? So she came to me and said, this yeah, is this bothering is, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm getting lost here. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. And so I had to gently say, you know, maybe it's better you don't come in here yeah. anymore. Let her, you That's let the her first go. time I ever saw. Well, I thought she was just right. I, didn't, I never knew that, by the way. And yes. I, what was, I mean, I, would, I looked at that and said, God, she's you just know, right. He was a director. In his own, and he and it's good. He had it. He had he his had own a different vision. vision. Yeah. So yeah. he wanted it, and it was strange. The job yeah. dialogue it was strange to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh oh. So here you are in this uh, in goofy Boy. outfit, and in your Mamasan's uh, bordello. Oh yeah. This... <laughs> See, uh, <laughs> they don't get it. See, they just don't get it. <laughs> Cash, I guess. I mean, it's not deductible, is it? <laughs> 
Well, those are pretty costumes this in this fun. film, and the, the sets are just gorgeous. They are. Yeah. You know, I wish these were in color, because what I really am sort of in the mood for is a girl with green eyes, and price is no object, Mrs. O'Toole. Fresh off the boats the way I like them. The more exotic, the better. Chinese girls do not come with... So what about action movies now? Uh, you feel like you're too old to do them? You like yeah. them? Do you? I love, I love, I like smart action movies. Mm -hmm. Or action movies that have, think, movies that have action that make you think a little. It doesn't have to be, you know, brilliant, but right. I think that it, you should think. But I do feel like, uh, I'm going to be 50 in March. Child. And yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know what? If I read the, if I read more scripts that were brainier in their right. activity, right. I'd feel right at home. But the scripts that I continue to read many of the times is, is just physical activity, um, and that I'm just not, I'm not interested in. Also, the last time I did a, the, my sort, I pulled that lottery chain one last time. You know what I mean? Was on you Soldier, hurt, you hurt and yourself, I really got hurt. And I said to myself, not only. Did you not break only am I tired, but I broke my I broke my left ankle, and I broke. And four days later, I broke the top of my right foot. What and I had did you the do? I had the rest of the movie to do. What did you do? It was oh, I wasn't going to lose that paycheck, so I just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. It was just terrible. And <clears throat> I said to myself, you know what, Kurt, you're not you're not as, uh, as quick as you think you are. You're not as slick as you used okay. to be, and 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 you need to be careful. And I thought, you know what, maybe how about a courtroom drama, you know. <laughs> You're a, you're a jock. You're a baseball player. I mean, yeah, baseball well, players you know, get After old. a while, you really do get... You really do... It's really... A, I think in that regard, as a viewer, I'd rather see a younger guy. Matter of fact, it takes me back to when we did Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. Remember they wanted Charlie Bronson? Mm -hmm. And you said Charlie's too old. Mm -hmm. Charlie would have been great. Mm -hmm. But Charlie was too old, and he was only what? What was Charlie then? 47? No, I don't even know. I mean, this is 1980. I don't even know uh, what you was know. there. And you said, no, I mean, I want this guy to be a 28-year-old 20, guy. guy, young yeah. guy. And I think that for for the most part, it should be young guys. guys. Yeah. I'd rather watch a younger guy. I don't want to watch a 50-year-old guy. You know, I'd say, well, if he's good, if he's supposed to be the best at whatever he does, how about if you get a guy that's 15, 20 years younger who's just as, who's just as, good. Just as good and he'll be better? Yeah. There's no doubt about it. It's... Uh... People look at, uh, at at Hollywood movies and action films, and they think, "Well, it's all fake." Yeah, it's, it's well. It takes guess what? Time. Yeah, it's just not. Guess what? It's guess not. Guess what? A lot of people get yeah. hurt. Yeah, I had never been that guy. I'd always been. Uh, oh, I remember this day. I had a temperature of 104. Was I was out of it. I was all, I was completely out of it. We were on location. You we were, were great. on location uh, <laughs> in downtown Los Angeles yeah. on that street where they preserved all those old Victorian mansions. Okay? Oh, really? You were sick as you I were sick. sweating. It That's was sick as I've ever been with us. I know. It was I said, bad. John, I'm really in trouble today. I'm really sick. You did great. And he I said, All right, you were great. You just said, Do do get it out. I'm gonna yeah. shoot you first. Get it yeah. out. You did great. I don't know what happened to you, but I you really, looked got, really bad. I got really sick. <laughs> I can I can see it in your eyes when I watch the scene. You that's did. where you I said, can yeah. see it. I can <laughs> that's where I can see it. They really are little eyes sometimes. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're little to begin with, but with on this day. <laughs> oh, and it's pain. You know, when you see somebody else, you know, oh, in pain, oh, it's just it's awful. This didn't want, it was one of the few days where he just said, oh, I just want to go. I go, just home. go home. And we could have actually probably done that, taking an insurance day. <laughs> yeah. that, your brother-in-law, Larry Franco, pushed that, you. Yeah, he did, yeah. Okay, no he mercy. pushed me, and he pushed you, so don't blame me. <laughs> now, Larry's doing good. Oh, Saw him uh, not too world, long ago. Man. He's doing great. He's yeah. just doing. He's doing good. Still trying to lose weight. <laughs> oh come on! Is he? Yeah, he works out every day now. Oh my god! Yeah, he, but he's doing good. He's really doing good. At the moment, at the time we're doing this, he's doing Jurassic Park uh, three, isn't he? He's. I think they yeah. just finished it because I was talking to a guy who worked on it. And Matt Franco did Matt work? I know he worked on Escape from. He was on uh, New um, York. Did he work on this? I don't think he. I don't believe not, he did. But he. Uh, we went and watched him in the World Series this yeah. year. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it was great. It was really great. So Larry and I had a great time there. Matt showed up at the at the uh, at the set of Escape from L.A. one night. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah, what he is was, this? He was I just saw him when he was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How's Cody doing? He's, by he's doing way? great. Is he? He's doing fabulous. Is he playing seriously? Uh, I mean, he's yeah. really big time. Yeah, he's big time. Yeah. Yeah, music, music, music. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's what he likes. That's yeah. love. But you know, he's 16. What do you want? Yeah, he's he's, he's good young. now. Yeah, he's he's getting pretty good. He's yeah. better than I am, and is he? And, and a lot of things. Yeah, well, he's got the key. He's got the the keyboard down. He's got uh, he can play. 
and he's sophisticated where I'm not. I'm really basic and yeah. simple, you know. Yeah. He's really good. So he is uh he's gone on from the guitar and yeah, he's, he's he loves, also he loves the keyboard. keyboards at this moment. But you know what he's kids are like, kid. they just they don't know until you get a little older what they're really going to end yeah. up doing, yeah. you know? Yeah, but he's sharp. He's I'm going to Wyatt's just... picked up the guitar, he the lead is guitar. He? Is he really? And he's uh, working on a lot of Led Zeppelin. Is that so, right? Yeah. So he's kind of taking on some tough stuff, but he, he's getting Is he still good. playing sports? Yeah, he's a uh, hockey. And yeah. uh, matter of fact, his team, uh, the L.A. Junior Kings, went to Quebec in February last year in uh, 2000, and they won the world championship. My God. Yeah, he's still in the goal. Was the old man there? Uh, no, no. Where were you? No, I was... Uh, oh, you mean at the thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was there for 10 say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was there for the whole 10 days. It was fantastic. 40 See. teams from... It was 100, 135 teams from 40 different countries. See, for the audience who's watching this movie... They really care about this. this exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Back to Big Trouble in Little China. See, this is what it's like when Kurt and I get together. We really... We talk about the stuff that matters, yeah. <laughs> really, the amazing thing about you as an actor, and I'm, I'm serious about this, is that the way you, the way you approach uh, acting and your craft, okay... Because you were Disney trained. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got a real, real good work ethic in terms of that. That real, well, I mean, you know, a we, real work we, ethic. And that on TV, and in those days, well, when we did Elvis. Yeah. You had 33 days, 33, right? Uh -huh. 33 days to do three, three hour hours yes. of television, and it was Elvis, uh -huh. and it was, I think, 16 songs. Uh huh. I don't know. 188 I mean, uh, uh, you know. speaking parts in 150 <laughs> different locations. And did it. and we did it somehow <laughs> and did it, and, but it's that, uh, it's that dedication that you have uh, that uh, to the craft that is that I wish other actors could well, understand. I, I do think that that's a good good thing for actors to get the opportunity and take advantage of having to do something. I mean, I also think it's true for writers. In the old days, they used to first write radio, and they had to pump it out, and they wrote TV, and they had to pump it out, and then they wrote movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, a guy writes a movie. And if it gets made, he's going to direct his next one. <laughs> not, oh, yeah. not only is he going to write, you know, he's going to direct it. And it's a different world in that regard. I think there's, there's been some uh, some growth in terms of that, but I think ultimately uh, it's a good thing to be able to uh, fall back on an, an ability to be able to pump it out. Because uh -huh. there's those days on the set when you got no choice. Yeah. You've just yeah. got to do it. And people come up to me and ask me about your preparation as an actor, how you prepare for a part. It's really, it's really hard to explain it to them, what you do. I think you figure a lot of it out ahead of time. But then you adjust at the moment, I think, to things. It's hard that's to... The, that was the great... That's the, just the most fun I've had with you in doing all the, all the things we've done. I just always felt real comfortable by just asking you some simple questions yeah, that you simple. always had a simple answer for. And, and we looked at each other and said, okay, we're going to do that. Keep it simple, keep, man. Keep it simple. We're going to do that. That's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna lock into it. We're going to believe in it. And then and then I'd go learn my lines. <laughs> Make sure you know those lines. And I really think there's a lot to be said for that. But you if know, you know, you know other actors. A lot of them obsess and they they worry and they get and they get insecure on the set. Then they change. They want to change. Well, I think one of the reasons that I've noticed that when I work with actors, when they get upset and insecure, is because they don't know the words. You think that's and, it? Yeah. And then if a director wants them to do something differently or see it a different way, they don't want to be bothered because they're still working on getting the line. Whereas if they really had the lines down cold, and I don't mean you rehearse it to a point where you're going to just do it by rote, but if you've got the words in your head, then when a director says, uh, you know, try it this way, you can, you can go you do it a hundred different ways because the words are going to come. You don't have to worry about that. Now, why wouldn't they know their lines? That, that's, I think, just what I'm talking about in terms of there's it. not much, not much, uh, not much training job? there. Isn't there's not much. Job? Well, they, I don't think they're used to going to work on a television show. You're going to do 26 shows in nine months. You're going to be out there every day for 16 hours. And uh, you're not going to have time to do anything but learn your lines the night before. And then when you get on the set, you've got so little, you're moving so fast that you just have to keep amped up so high and, and be ready. And I don't, I think that uh, now um, there are a lot of actors never do that. And, uh, you know, I think it, it also I never knew much about uh, legitimate theater, having done it only once with the guys in, uh, off of the suggestion of the guys in the thing. But look, you did a great job in that. I had a great time. Yeah. And I understood why they looked at that as great training. I understood that. Uh -huh. But it is a different medium. There's no you get question up there every night about in front it. Of yeah, you, and you gotta you gotta stick to it. But uh, in in this in this kind of movie right here, if you're worried about lines, if you're seriously, if you don't have the lines in this movie here, you can't play the part. There's yeah. no way uh, 
uh, Kim could have no. been drifting in there, sort of half knowing her lines, or Dennis, or myself. No, it wouldn't with, work. With, it. And if you no. wanted us to, there was a lot of movement in this. If you wanted us to get someplace, we couldn't be thinking about, <laughs> forget the movement. I don't even know what the line is. You know, and you can see that kind of lost look on an Isn't actor's strange? face. strange? I think that's just something that. But there was they another. There's another thing you said to me once, and I, and and I don't want to get too far away from Big Trouble here, but an actress I will not uh, name. You came to visit me on location. You flew up. I was up in Northern California, and there was an actress who's having a problem. Mm -hmm. I said it's really interesting. She's really struggling, and she. I know she's really talented. Yep. Yep. Uh, and yep. you said to me, she doesn't think she can do the part. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't now look very secure. That's really looked, fascinating. She just looked like she didn't believe in herself there at that at that at time that, that time, day. Yeah. And um, she's good. You're oh, right. yeah. I mean, I she's know, a terrific she's, actress. She's a good actress. And, uh, but what was it but that, that was just I, one... I could never get my hand on? What, what was it? Did I do something wrong? Did I not give her the security? I'm, I, you know, I'm, I don't I think that's... beating myself up for I don't, it. I mean, I think that you can... That's like being a parent with a kid who just grows up and goes <laughs> goes south on you. Yeah. Uh, you do the best you can do, right? I don't, I don't think... Now, I don't know. I'd ask you about that and say, did you think... Do you think that when a director casts an actor, if he's cast him right, Probably 90% of your job is done, done with that guy, right? That's done. But if you've cast that person wrong, are you ever going to get it right? Well, no. You're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. <laughs> you get through it, yeah. but if, you, if you've if you made a mistake in casting, and listen, everybody makes those kind of mistakes. You choose for the wrong reason. And that's why everybody's afraid of going against type. Yep. And it makes sense. Absolutely. Because if you but type somebody and they've played it a hundred times, you yeah. know they're going to do it again. Yeah. Right? You never... The thing that fascinated me about you with this movie, with The Thing, and with Escape from uh, New York... And Elvis, you were saddled. You never, you never uh, gave me the feeling that you were worried about me. You, I, I always had the feeling that you knew I was, go I was going to do what you wanted. I was going to do what you thought it called for. And I always felt, even if I had a little bit of like, eh, am I, you know, am I doing? I don't know. Is that too far? Is that not far? And I, all I ever felt was that I could look at you and you'd say, and tell you. you'd say, go a little more or back off a little. You're getting, you know. But I never felt like, Jesus, I feel, I feel really bad because John has cast the wrong guy. On, I think our training ground was on Elvis. I remember one night you were doing, we were doing a scene in that. And uh, we had some new dialogue and Elvis was talking about Jacob's Ladder and he was getting kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I kept encouraging you to go a little further yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. And you finally, you did, yeah, you really got yeah. wild out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, remember, yeah. Uh, I said, well, as long as he's, as long as he's, you know, I mean, it was just not, right. Uh, we, it was just know. right. Now... Here's where uh, David Lopan gets to take off. <laughs> he was great in this. I loved him here. James Hong. James Hong. Yeah, he's uh, he didn't he, like that makeup too much. That was it was uncomfortable. That was not fun. Yeah, it was extremely tight on his face. And uh, yeah, I remember he was uncomfortable, but boy, he he knew how to use it and work with it. He's a good actor. He's been around. He's been around a long time. Do you know where he started? He started in World War II. Get this. Here's a Chinese guy. He went around to USO shows. Doing uh, Al Jolson impressions. That'd be Asian, John. <laughs> <laughs> He's an <Sorry>. Asian guy. <laughs> doing, Isn't he Chinese? Uh, in fact, yeah, he is. He's not Asian. He's Chinese He's from China. No, he's not from China. He's from. He's an American, but his ancestry is Chinese. Okay. And uh, he went around doing Al Jolson blackface impressions. Wow. I'm not kidding. Wow. During World War II. For World War II. Yeah. No, he's, he's unbelievable. Really good. He's he had amazing a lot of stuff stories. to do in this. I always thought that he understood this movie better than anybody yeah. except for you. I always well, kind of looked at him and said, he, he, he really got this gets character. this. He got, the, he got the character and what his dilemma was, this uh, wanting, wanting to be flesh again. And, yeah, and, he really yeah, he got he, it. He, he sold it. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, just as an actor, I think uh, probably... More people have talked to me about Victor Wong as Egg Shen mm -hmm. out of Big Trouble in Little China than any other actor uh, in it. And uh, I think he was pretty special. He just Victor's he, amazing. He just really hit his stride right there for you. And you, you that that's that was a, a situation of perfect casting. I think you found the perfect guy for that. So we were talking about uh, about acting, and at this point, at this point in my career, I had come off Starman, which had given Jeff Bridges a nomination. Right, and that was I had to I had to do penance for the thing because it was right. so mean a right. movie. 
Everybody right. thought, right, right. I he's was a really, bad guy. Yeah, he's really right. crazy. He is yeah, not. So really we can't bad. let him do this yeah, anymore. We can't let him out anymore. So that was my. Uh, no, I'm so sorry, well, to all of you. Well, I can remember. And also, at this time, as I said before, you were saddled with me on Elvis. Uh-huh. Then I went and did used cars. Right. Did not Which make is great, it. Which great, great movie. Did not I make it. Movie. It's now also a cult movie. I but love did that. not make it at the time. Was just died. Uh, and then Escape from New York. That movie made it. I mean, that movie had it going from the top. But that was the only movie I did at that time that made any money. That was even successful. And then uh, I did a movie shortly, either before or after this, with Robin Williams, The Best of Times. Didn't do anything. Did a movie with Goldie Overboard, which it was perceived as doing nothing. And in fact, it actually was the only movie that kept climbing at the time. But it started so low. And and an actor's opening movies, obviously, I was no help to it. <laughs> Swing Shift was uh, no good. Swing Shift didn't do I anything. I thought they made some money. No, no. I, don't, I mean, I don't think. It certainly wasn't any kind of a yeah. hit at all. And I remember we talked about this a little bit, and I said, John, you know, am I just death? I mean, did you want to do this? And I, I always appreciated that you said, it doesn't make any difference to me. I just want to make the movie I want to make. And uh, you you did. <laughs> well, it's it's probably, it's it's odd to, for people to think now because they people assume that everyone's always been famous and right. successful. Right. And it isn't and true we were all. No, no, no. Because no. 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 you had done Halloween and went through the roof. I mean, Halloween yeah. rewrote the books. And then Elvis, which people couldn't even... That's always a great fascination. They couldn't put it they, together. They, they still can't. They all go, that's right, John Carpenter did that. You know why they hired me for Elvis? Did I ever tell you why? No. D- Dick Clark. They what hired me because I had done the music to Halloween. They thought, well, he knows about music. He there should know about Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> they were right. Do you believe that? <laughs> and they were right. <laughs> can you imagine that's what, great. how bad it could have been? Though? Well, I felt sorry can for you. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I just remember seeing uh, that... Uh, Going up that ramp. Uh-huh. How did you do that? And I remember that was a tricked up deal. That was a false perspective set. Basically, it was flat, but the set was built at a tilt. So uh, there's one sequence coming up where you go flying backwards, right? Right. It was on a track, but you weren't going downhill. I was going. You were flat. You're absolutely flat, flat straight right. across the, the right. stage. Right. Still, you put your, your lead actor in one of those contraptions. You always worry a little bit. I, I remember thinking, I remember saying to you, now, do I lean a little bit backwards uh, or a little boy. bit forwards here? But that's that's one of those great trick sets. I always love those things. Yeah. I always love those things yeah. in movies. Yeah. I tend not to believe them. But you're right. Uh, people think, uh, and rightfully so, that, you know, if as the years go by, that they were you were always uh, successful and famous and uh-huh. all. This was at a time, in, in certainly in my life, where... I, the movies I was doing were not, people weren't going to see them. And they did go to video. Video was, and by the way, I remember video at this time was just really becoming sort of a just big starting deal. Up, yep. And I think had it not been for that, I think, honestly, my career probably would have just not happened. You think so? Oh, yeah. If it hadn't been for video, I don't think it would have happened. you know, look, at, talk, talk about Tequila Sunrise. You came out in this kind of really that, sexy, sophisticated that was, part. That was the... And all of a sudden, hey, who is this that cool was, guy? Uh, that was right? uh, really the movie for me that began to take me out of the... Don't put him in the movie. Nobody goes to the theater if he's in the movie. That took it did start to take me out of that. Uh, and it reached its pinnacle with Captain Ron. Then Captain Ron, then of course, went over the top. <laughs> I actually like Captain Ron. Ah, 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 ah. You know what I love about Captain Ron is again is it's like some for me as an actor it was something that I wasn't going to get a chance to do. Oh yeah. You know I just oh, wanted yeah. to do it because I wasn't going to get a chance to do it. Uh huh. And I I was uh, appreciative of getting the opportunity. I thought, man, that guy has so much courage. It's so fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now this is actually flat. You are right going here. across the flat ground, but the set is built at a tilt, so yeah. it appears that you're going downhill. I remember this part uh-huh. going backwards was kind of weird. And then Didn't you know. had a st- stop on that. <laughs> this thing. was blank. <laughs> you grab that, and against all odds, pull yourself up. <laughs> Why is Jack Burton? <laughs> and we had a false perspective set on looking that. down, so it was a tiny, tiny drop, but still. A little bit tricky. Now I don't remember if that was you from the back or Warlock. I think it was Warlock because I don't remember doing that. I don't remember. I remember you did this part, and then we we actually let the chair fall. So you were there by yourself. You <laughs> you shove it, right? Make sure it goes over. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. You know this. It was reminded. It was mighty. You know this movie cost about twenty million. Uh, you know I don't know. I was going to say I, I, I have no memory of the of the budget of it. But I remember it being a big budget movie. Yeah. Or the time. thinking about it as a big budget movie. They made me cut it in the beginning. It was supposed to be more, and they kept making me cut now, it. Now, see, down. I wonder, what do you think? Has, over the years now, has uh, this movie recouped its money? I have no idea. I wonder. I'm not getting I any, haven't seen anything checked. I have any checks. <laughs> Where are my checks? <laughs> A little transformation effect here, and 
James Hong is going to... Uh, now, that's a, that's a phony head there that glows from the inside and shoots out the light. And now he floats, doesn't he? Actually, he's on a dolly. He's on a Watch dolly this. here. He's hanging on to it. And there he goes. <laughs> Flash again soon. Please. Let's go, it's clear. Safety! Oh, yeah. First time you ever plugged somebody? Of course not. Come on! You want to go up or down? Up or down? Up! So we're shooting uh, this particular sequence in, in downtown uh, Los Angeles in the industrial area. This, this uh, location has been used a hundred times now. I actually saw it in a porn film the other night. <laughs> <laughs> But it was a great Some place. Some of your for us. finest work. Exactly. <laughs> it was a great place uh, to shoot. It worked for us yeah. Uh, perfectly. Yeah. Kate Burton. Kate Burton was a blast. Was, oh, she, she was, was sweet. Now, have you seen her at all lately? I haven't seen her. She was just. She's just in a play, and, and she's doing really good. She's really a nice person. She did a good job in this too. That's definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't you. That was uh, that was That's Warlock. Probably Warlock. Yeah. Hi. I saw Dick in a movie uh, recently. I can't remember. What he's in Casino. That's I know. That was he's in the Casino. Yeah. He was a great guy. We were together for. Well, you guys were quite twenty-two few years. years. When did you guys start together? We started, Dick Warlock was uh, Kurt's uh, my stunt, stunt man. man, and he started, uh, I believe. One of the first Disney movies I did as an adult. I, I can't remember which one it was, but it was I was about 18. Yeah. And uh, was it this the was getting movie, towards whatever you did. It? What's that? I never saw that computer movie. What was it? Oh, the computer tennis? Yeah, I never saw. You it. never saw it? No. <laughs> John, come on. That's like you know, right there with Citizen Kane. I was smoking marijuana, you know? <laughs> man. I wasn't <laughs> going probably, to that. You know, you can't. You know, you're, you're not supposed to miss that. You just, you're, you're supposed to learn your craft and cut your teeth on great movies. Um, but I think it was uh, it was maybe that one. And, uh, you know, he was a uh, little older than I was. And I guess it was, I can't remember the last movie we did together, but it was 22 years that I know. That's we amazing. Huh? And then John Casino came uh -huh. in. And now it's been, I don't know, 15 years or something with John. Maybe Is more. that right? I didn't know. That. Well, let's see, 22, 15, 37, probably, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 17 years now with John. They amaze me how they can continue to just take it. Yeah, but they're good. So we're now we're going to come up to a scene where uh, you Who's guys Who's this are... gal, John? I don't remember. I don't. She was I good. I really don't remember. Come we, up to a scene that Where what? you guys are in the swimming pool, then you're swimming uh, uh, down this little kind of uh, trough. And I remember we had to... Well, first of all, the underwater scene earlier, I got this horrible ear infection from because I was underwater with the camera. Right. It was the worst. I don't know how you escaped it, though. That's what pisses yeah, me I off. Got, yeah. You did like you swim I escaped there? it on that, but I didn't escape it later on when I did backdraft. Billy Baldwin and I were in a uh, tank. Uh, what we happened? all we were, well, we were blind for two days. The paint all off the set. The paint right? off the set. Did you believe it? It would never I, think and, that. And we, our eyes were cut. Oh. And we were lucky. We, we didn't go blind. I mean, we were lucky. And uh, we, uh, two days later, we put all kinds of stuff in our, in our eyes, and 
Yeah, it, it, people don't think about that, but that no, paint but starts to come it off. It starts to come off, and if the water's warm, which, of course, they want to be nice and keep it warm for they everybody. Have, they have to be. Uh, and it started peeling off, and it gets uh, in the water. And it's... It, uh, but I didn't have... There was no problem here. We did a lot of water stuff here. We did. Then you swim through a, into a set, and I remember this was one particular... We had to uh, make sure that the water was... Seriously, was uh, clean enough for you guys because everybody goes through this little trough. Well, right, we couldn't have it like, right. bacteria filled. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <this> is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we are. That's a that was that's yeah. a tiny little set. Actually, you guys are just swimming. <laughs> First kiss. Hey. Sorry. We'll get to the scene later, but my favorite <laughs> scene in this is when you, when we, the, the idea came when you're kissing her in the elevator and you come out with a lipstick. Remember on. we said, uh -huh. Uh -huh. what are we going to do about the lipstick? <laughs> what a great, great thing to do. Now that's, that's an example of what, what a, an actor, we wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. Well, we even asked ourselves at that point, you got this, the, here, now at this point in the movie, you got the leading guy, the, even, no matter what you've done, do you want him going through the next 10 minutes with lipstick on his face? Because we have some fairly serious stuff to do. And we looked, we both looked at him, we both looked at each other and we went, yeah, he would, you know, it's, it would, it's just what it would be. Because she had, at the time, uh, this real intense... Bright red. Right, bright red, and yeah. boy, it came right off on yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're climbing up this set and back into the location in downtown Los Angeles. This I, was on a set in... This part was on a set in at 20th Century yeah. Fox. This is on uh, location, downtown L.A. And... Uh, we're starting to come into a fight now that Dennis Dunn does all by himself. I think right. this was when this, the studio knew that they might not have gotten the movie that they wanted <laughs> when Jack loses his knife and misses the entire fight. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he gives all these instructions and he opens the door and it's over. <laughs> we may be in trouble or whatever the line is. Ready? Follow the leader. One. <laughs> there he goes. Oops. We may be trapped. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. See, that's that's the character that uh, that I wanted to see you play. That was the guy. <laughs> I remember those. That whole set was all white plaster, wasn't yep. it? All those yep. figurines. Yep. Oh, you actually get some shots. So oh, hey, Jack, hey. in motion here. Look at him. Oh, yep. well. Yep. So now they got to fight. We're just waiting to see Jack bust out. <laughs> bust out. Let's see him and bust there goes, out. There goes so Dennis or someone it all who looks himself. a lot like him. <laughs> Dennis did good. Working on getting the knife. Uh huh. <laughs> there it goes. Dennis was not a martial artist, and he did great. Yeah, you know? he did do great. It, it's yeah. all in the it's, it's in, in, it's it's in, in the, the yeah it's, it's in the, in the head it's and the they, he's completely uh, got the great attitude. There he comes. <laughs> He's back with us now. <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> See, the only way I think you get good stuff like this is if you take these kind of risks. And that's, but that's the thing about uh, uh, anybody. Time to go. <laughs> that was great. You're right, though. Dennis, even though he wasn't, that wasn't his thing, he, he, he understood it. And he, he sold it really well. Understood it. He worked on his sword fighting. He always had this yeah, yeah, wooden yeah, sword yeah, in his yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, he played with that a lot. Because he, he wanted that sword fight through the air to look pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's a cheesy cross eyed monster. <laughs> Who was that? Who was back? I was don't it two remember. guys back there with <laughs> each one of them had an eye? Well, the problem was there was a mechanism, but it didn't quite work, so one <laughs> eye moved a little faster than the other. Oh, special <laughs> effects. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> They're almost out of there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Except we lose her. And uh, you run to the bus, and there's a lot of gunfire, but... Uh, we took the girls with us. That's uh, right. We escaped some of them. Yeah, well, I'm very happy that you did. I'm yeah, very some, worried of them, about them. some of them got away. We saved very some. Very worried about them. It's interesting, Kurt. It's uh, uh, 
You've done kind of all sorts of films. Is there any one kind that you particularly love above another? Is it just the individual project, or do you like dramas? <clears throat> what do you What do you think? No. You had to be pinned down on it. What would you think? I think the probably the. Do you just look at these characters that you get a chance to play, and then mm -hmm. you see how the movie comes out, and you remember the experience you had? And when you take all those things and you combine them, I'd have to say that Escape from New York was probably the best experience I ever had, because it just worked. It just worked on a level that, that I hoped it, it would, yeah. and that you totally yeah. saw. And, and doing it was as much fun as seeing it. Did you ever have a movie you did where you didn't have a good experience, but the result was great? You know what I'm saying? Where it was not. I, I, I may have just done that. <laughs> <laughs> I may have just done that, that, and right? I, no names. Yeah. Okay. May have just done that. Um, uh, have you had some bad you know, experiences? I mean, you know what yes, I mean. Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, I had one, and it was a location picture, uh -huh. and uh, it was away from the family. Yeah. And <laughs> the people on the show were not very good. Yeah, well, when you say and the actors, good. the, the uh, some of the actors, some uh -huh. of the actors, especially some. the ones, a lot of ones I had to work with, were just uh, one, one, one in particular was just having the roughest time. Oh, really? Uh, in and and in, in their life, and um, it was misery. It was just really? a misery. But I had taken it. So that I could do another movie, for which I, what I knew was going to be half price, right? And uh, it all worked out. Yeah, they worked out exactly like that. The one that I did for half price was a real, g real good movie to have done, uh -huh. and uh, and that was fun. Um, but you know what? I, I still go with what we've talked about a number of times: is that it's fun. It's fun, really fun to watch this now, and remember it. But what I remember, and I think what's hard for people to understand, is that. Even though you spend a great deal of time with the picture after it's done shooting, I don't. And uh, I'm really, I really think that people in my position, especially, they have the experience of making the movie. Everybody else in the world, except for the people who are working on the picture, have the experience of the movie, but they don't have the 3D version of it yeah. live. Yeah. And I remember that. I take that as my great memories. Right. You know, I really take those as my great memories. And uh, it's impossible to watch the movie unless it's a long, long time since you've seen it to really enjoy just the movie. And even then, you sort of pull back really the day right? and the good time you're right. having with people. And um, So it's impossible to separate, really, isn't it? It is for me. Yeah. It is for me. Yeah. I just I look back at the stuff we've done together, and that's what makes me want to work together again. Not the pictures that we came out with. I like, I like them because I'm... I would, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. I, I I like that type of a movie, but the experience, but the experience, for me, we've worked together what five times? God, I don't know. Is that true? Five or six times? Five, five times. times, I think, huh? Um, it makes me want to work again because it's always been fun. It's just always been a great time. Yeah, five times. Five times. Five times. And I'm sure that's true with other uh, people who work together. They just they enjoy each other's company, in a, in all ways. Uh huh. And that's what I. I guess increasingly I walk away with that. I increasingly look toward the day as what I'm going to walk away with. When I was a young director, I had people telling me, now, look, you know, you can't go by the experience because sometimes if you go through a lot of pain with somebody and, and it's really terrible, sometimes you'll get a good result, okay, on the screen. Yeah. I've never found that to be the case. I, for the most part, neither have I. I, have, I well, if you've had a good time and you're following what you're going to do and you achieved it, it's usually a pretty good. Usually movie. pretty good movie. If That's the, the script I... was, if the script was good, I mean, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I think you and I are believers in the script, though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I made, <laughs> I've made a couple pictures without scripts, and they're not good. You know, the, the movies you didn't like the movies. Oh yeah, I didn't like you them because like... I that the script wasn't right and the things yeah. I hadn't solved in the script. Right. No, it became problems, and then you had to deal with it in the editing and room. And then you have to deal with it. And yeah. Then you're, then you're in some kind of trouble. It's fun to watch. Oliver um, is now uh, getting into making movies, uh -huh. and it is fun to talk with him and try to impart for him the importance of the script. It's, yeah. It really is. I mean, even if it's, what, no matter what the script is, if it's as close to what it should be, you're in better shape than if you didn't have it. That's right. And it's and that, I believe, is where you should put the hard work. That's in. right. And I, you know, people talk to me about researching characters and doing mm -hmm. stuff like that. If the writer has done it, mm -hmm. it's been done. Then there you the, are. There you, you are. The guy. The guy it. is who he is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you don't need to. Uh, matter of fact, I think research can be harmful because you may research and find stuff that the writer chose not to use. Mm -hmm. He might have read it or, or, or gone through it before and said it doesn't really fit 
what I'm trying to say in this movie. And I think sometimes an actor can get locked into other research that won't be helpful for this movie. Now, I think it's always good to have a full-on concept of what, who it is you're playing and what you're doing. But if it gets in the way of what the writer did, the other part of that is, is if the writer hasn't done that, you're, when you read it, you see it. Right, right. And it's right. there. And then you then you, then you guys say, well, I don't understand this guy. <laughs> you know, who is he? Which one is he? Have you ever had a director have a completely different <clears throat> idea of how to play a movie? And complete, I mean, totally different. Yep. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's and, tough, and, isn't it? Uh, it's tough. It's just. How do you deal with How do you possibly deal well, with Well, I always feel like it's his movie or her movie. And it's your job as an actor to pull off that vision. I mean, there's got to be a captain of the ship. The director's it. Yeah, and, but what if it's right? so wrong? I mean, they're steering, steering the ship into. You know, I'll, I'll, I will, I will, I will try to, I will try to um, give my point of view. You know? Yeah. But I just, but I, but but the problem there is, is if if you realize that the person doesn't have a vision, it's all wasted time now, and you might, hopefully you're going to dazzle them with footwork. Yeah. And when you don't, it's just a bad movie. Now, William Goldman, the famous writer, in his last book says that we, none of us directors, have any vision. That's what he says. We have no vision, zero vision. I, don't, I, I know that in your case that's not true. I know that in Bob Zemeckis' case that's not true. That's what he says. Now, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why, does he, why does he say that, though? I don't know. Does he say it because he's, well, he's, written, has he said, <coughs> he's written scripts that the, that the director had a different, did a different version of his vision? No, he just says we have no vision. None of us. None, no, today? No, uh -huh. Today, uh -huh. as opposed to yesterday? Yeah. We have no vision. We have no vision. It's all the screenplay. Um, I think that, I think that it's fair to say that it's been in my experience that in, the, in years, just recent years, I've worked with directors who had, it was difficult for them to have a vision. Yeah, I've been they, hearing, I've been hearing that in the business a lot. They, they don't see no. it. They no, know they what see. They, want. they see something. They, they see know. a shot. They see a color. They see a. It's more. I think I do think we're in. That was, this is speak. I was just. That's actually a good point. Right here, right now, you're watching your. In your mind, you were seeing him, and you saw yeah. him in that slow. Yeah. You saw him. Yeah. You only shot him that way. Uh -huh. um, I think that now there are lots of directors. Some of them have been successful. More of them are not going to be, and have not been. That are just see something, shoot it because it looks good, and then it's just a. It's just one. It's a, a succession of good-looking images. Okay. That aren't telling any story, really. They're not making me feel anything. Interesting. And that's maybe what, I mean, I would, I would, I would assume that's what William Goldman maybe is saying. Was this uh, a recent development for you? Do you, th you see this in recent years? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. More, more now than... Than before in the old before. days? Yeah. Now, in the old days, too, I mean, there were really guys that were traffic cops. Uh -huh. you know? I mean, they knew how to shoot an entrance and an exit and get everybody mm -hmm. in focus. Um, but there are directors that have vision. They do have vision. I mean... I can, I've said this many times in interviews, I can watch 20 seconds of a movie of yours, and I can say, I don't know what the movie is, but I can tell you it's a John Carpenter movie. Yeah. I know it. I mean, I can just see that. I can watch, I can watch... Uh, well, Zemeckis surely has. Zemeckis. It. I can watch the Zemeckis movie for a problem. I, I need more than that, because Zemeckis has shot movies that in some ways... If I, I, but I can still say that about Starman, for instance, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I can see Starman and say... Even if I didn't know it was your movie, and I'd say, oh, that's John. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's a little more difficult with Bob, but I can watch uh, some shots in Forrest Gump. That you or I know can watch some him, shots you know, in, yeah. in Castaway and say, uh -huh. oh, that's Bob Zemeckis' movie. Uh, that's also true for you know, other, other, other men, um, other, other directors. But, uh, but nowadays... And there's that's a whole so different style. style going on, and there's a. It, it, I think it's been influenced by commercials and MTV very and a whole, a whole lot of very fast. What do you? What do you? I mean, listen. You did stuff that influenced them, as we know, to shoot certainly on MTV. I mean, I mean, some, there were some big video. This very set, I know, was used, and and the look of the way the set was shot was used, a lot. Not just a little, not a couple, but a lot. But my That's style, feeling. see, is not is is much different than it's old fashioned. Well, it's much more old fashioned than. Yeah, than... but see, your style. I think what was interesting to, is like I watch a movie like The Fog. Your style then was old fashioned too. Mm -hmm. Oh, because yeah. you never were changed. I never all changed. about telling story. Uh, yeah, well, that. And I mean, I think That's right, why I like. Doing movies with you because I like stories. But I that really was beaten like into stories. my head the same way you were trained. Okay, 
about craft in the in your time at Disney? Mm -hmm. Why well, it was it was beaten into my head from my college? Well, that days. was the for me that was the Walt Disney deal was that he he believed in telling a story. Now, I think the great thing is when you get the combination of great visualists uh -huh. with storytelling. With storytelling, that's yeah. cool. That's to me that's yeah. you know I mean, that's gonna that's, it's always gonna, gonna win, win, isn't it? It's gonna win. Yeah. Whereas I really would rather see. Ah, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I could pick and criticize and stuff, but I I like some movies as much as the next guy that doesn't really tell a lot of story and make me feel a lot, but it's visually fantastic. It's fun to watch, It's right? okay. I'm yeah. okay with that. And I'm okay also with a really good story that's told very flatly. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that, too. Mm -hmm. But to me, if you've got a combination of... Of the two? Of just some combination of the two. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be greatly shot. Just has It just tells the story. It just you know has a way of telling the story. And uh, I, I mean, I'd be interested in what you... You know, you're in that world. What You know, you're in that world with these guys. With what's going on now? Well, it, you know, the world certainly has changed. You know, as you get older, you were talking about turning, uh, coming up to fifty. I mean, I've just turned fifty-three, and I've, I've been doing, I've been directing for features Since for you were, about thirty years yeah, professionally. But you were also making movies when you were eight oh, years yeah, when old. I was young. I mean, you were but, making full on. But real features. I mean, re real feature movies uh, for about thirty-one years. And uh, it's it certain everything has changed about the business, but the the essentials of storytelling have never changed. No. No. I mean, you can in, you, if you know the rules and you can break them and invert them, you right. can do all sorts of great stuff. Right. You can but tell, you're... but you have to know the rules of it. Yeah. Or at least some basics of it, and it, it's it's much like anybody's craft. It's like uh, it's like an actor. You, you kind of have some basics that you got to cover. Like you said, you got to know your lines first of all to be able to play a scene. You can't invent the lines. No. It's and ultimately, ultimately, as an actor, you have to make people feel something. Yep. If they don't feel anything, you can't get that invested. Now, I, I don't care what time, I don't, a thousand years from now, they can be making movies in whatever, whatever technical ability exists at that time. But if it doesn't make me feel something, I don't think I'm going to get much out of it. Now, what do you think about the people who who use the so-called and I'm, I, if it's cliche, the method act, the method approach to acting, where they bring up their own feelings, okay? Yeah. Their own emotions. Yeah. Now, I know you, you're not. I, I quite never, that kind of I never trained that way, but okay, I think well, you get to the same place. I mean, I think that method acting, from what I understand, and having talked to other actors, really good ones that that were good at it, it was a technique for them to get to a place. Okay. I've always felt that, however you get to that place, it better be, you that place better be honest. Right. If the place is honest, I mean, even look at Jack Burton. As far as I'm concerned, I was honest in what he was supposed uh -huh. to be. I mean, at least for me, I was honest. Now, maybe somebody could have done this a lot better than I could. Maybe they had a whole different take on it that would have would have given it like some kind of fantastic, perfect. I I don't have that. I didn't have that. But I know that whatever you do as an actor, if you don't get to a place where you believe it, how is the audience supposed to believe it? And 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 the question I have there is, shouldn't the audience believe it. I mean, aren't we, aren't we always trying to make suspend the reality? I yes. Mean, suspend their believability. Yes. We want them to be in the world that you're showing them. Yeah. And believe the characters that they're seeing. Yeah. Believe in them. One of the things that, th that this movie was criticized at the time, and I thought it was a fair criticism of the style of movie making, was that two things. One, you never really felt that Jack Burton or anybody else was in real danger, mm -hmm. and two, that. He didn't really. Care. He didn't really. He wasn't really crazy in love with the Kim Cattrall character, so you weren't really worried about anything. And I think that's a fair criticism. Fair it was just that we were taking a we were taking a movie trying to make you believe and care for the people, and then we were going to turn it on its ear and say, mm -hmm. "Aren't you going to kiss her?" No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Not him. Not not you know. And that's ab absolutely fair. Fair characterization. I think that's one of the things that the studio wanted us to to put in was. Uh, well, they wanted to think that maybe you wouldn't make it, right? That, that that the characters wouldn't make it. They wanted to think that you were you and and Kim were going to end up together, or right. at least there was going right. to be something so, more going on there. Yeah. But this was oh, I remember one of the one of the lines written about it was that it was it was absolutely fabulous and terminally hip. <laughs> and I thought that's actually an interesting kind of cr criticism. Terminally hip. Terminally, this guy's great. This, this, <laughs> this ridiculous. This ball. is very hip. The eyeball is very hip. Uh, but I think that. But uh, well, we did the script. That was what we the did script the script. Was. That's what the script was. We believed in it and said, "Let's let's go." You're going to commit to something like that, then yeah. you've got to go for it. And, yeah. and if had it been, 
Had we had a love story, then that would be a slightly different film, and maybe it would have been okay. Do you I think don't the audiences know. today who liked this movie would have liked it as much? I, I, I definitely think, don't think so. I don't know. I, I, from talking to them, I, I think that they definitely are I think glad that, that the ending is what the ending is, that it looks like a sequel. It's not. Yeah, well, yeah. It, you know, there was all that, too. Well, I get that all the time yeah. in, in the endings, where if you don't resolve something... And you have an ending that has a question mark, or you repeat something over, or you bring another element into it. They say, well, you're just doing that because you want a sequel. Not really. Not no. really the thing. I remember you were no, the thing. That just wasn't true. That was the end of that movie. We were out there, and you came up with that last line. You said, this is an ending for a film. It, what, what else could we do? Yeah, I mean, exactly. There was, what, what does that story say? And uh, I remember you and I talking about that a yeah. lot. Because yeah. have we taken them on a two-and-a-half-hour, two-hour ride where there's no resolve? Well, yeah. Yeah, if I'm, there's no resolve to this. So. And, you know, the original script had it ending where we left you guys in the snow, and coming back, they picked you up in the fall, and you were both creatures. Uh, that was like a... Uh, no, that no, tells you exactly no, something. No, no, Even on. in the original, though, they left it open for what could have, in That's a different right. time period, been considered a a uh, sequel ending, where it That's said, right. keep your eyes to the... What was yeah. that? Keep, what did it say? Keep, keep watching the sky. Keep watching the sky. Oh, the, first, the old, old movie was great, though. It was, it was great. Nice time. Oh, oh, it was fabulous. Geez. It was fabulous. So we're getting now down, down to the big uh, final action scene. As I recall, you guys took some drugs <laughs> in that elevator. <laughs> that's, that's a line that people say to me. <laughs> that's a line that people say to me all the time when we were in the elevator. I feel kind of <laughs> invincible. <laughs> oh, actually, you haven't done it yet. I think you do it in a minute. And you toast the United States. I remember I'm being really fun. That was a fun thing to do. There he goes, right through it. Elevator that goes down. I know it's an elevator. But I, but I I see the criticism and and I think that when I first read the script I thought to myself uh, the unique part of this film isn't that it that it follows uh, conventions. That's yeah, right. right. That, that it goes against them. And if you don't, I, I also think you know when you watch a movie like this, you've done a movie like this. If you don't look at it and say where are they right? Mm -hmm. Where are they possibly right? Where are they possibly wrong? Criticisms. If you don't. Then the next time you want to break the conventions, maybe you'll break them better. Yeah. Maybe you'll break yeah. them. Maybe you. Maybe you'll disappoint others. Yeah. But maybe you'll break them better. Six demon bag, sensational. What's in it, egg? Lynn. Fire. So I can't remember how long we shot this movie for, Kurt. It, it seemed like a few months. Okay. Maybe two or three months. Yeah. I cannot remember was, now. Yeah. And it was at Christmas time. I remember. Yeah. I remember Wyatt coming down to the set and loving the. He was just. The oh, no, wait, that was just before he was born. Was it really? Mm-hmm. It was just before he was born. The kids came out. <laughs> here, here's the part that, that everybody else is... Uh, yep. Everybody's a little stoned here. I'm not, uh, not scared at all. I just feel kind of... I feel kind of invincible. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Egg, and then egg putting up with it. Uh huh. <laughs> and then, uh, and then Jack in the final fight, he actually gets gets a couple of, of lucky things happen. But boy, that first uh, when he shoots, this him, is great. Yeah. Hits him in the head. It's really a sad, sad day. <laughs> it's a sad oh, day. I can remember we talked about this too. We said he's not going to do anything. Well, what are we going to do? What he's not going to perform here. And uh, if you don't leave him with a laugh or something to, to enjoy, you really do have a problem. But the people who have enjoyed this movie, they really look at this as one of the well, they get best that whole thing. They of, get yeah, that whole like thing. Perfect for them. Which is uh, uh, the whole point. The whole point of the film. You actually do heroic things. I mean, there's, <laughs> just, there's no he, doubt. But, but he's but he really can't. an idiot. He really, <laughs> he really is way <laughs> over his head. He doesn't understand this, and he's not ready for it. He looks like he is. He wants to be. <laughs> There's Susie with the white eyes. You know? Oh, yeah, and she didn't like this. And she didn't, uh, if you notice, that there's a retractable needle, and and James Hong got a little carried away in this. And if you watch her, she starts wincing when he when he jams it in there because he was really into this. He <laughs> yeah, really he got this. into it up there. Now watch her face oh, uh, in a second when you come back to her. Oh, <laughs> easy, there, easy. There, there. She doesn't like it too much because he's just going to town on her. And... Uh, she did great, though. She stood right there hung and, in. and hung in. She's got the longest neck in the world. Oh, 
<laughs> and here we go with our big, uh, our big fight. Everybody gets a yell here. Everybody's coming out of it. This is it. It's going to happen now. Finally, you're going to get to see Jack Burton in action. That's it. <laughs> but no. <laughs> there he goes. He's out of the picture. He's out of it. He's out of He's the done. picture. There he is. <laughs> And this whole scene, uh, this is where we started getting into the, the real supernatural fantasy. Now, this was the stuff that is not, some of this stuff, in, in ways, when you get into it, is not dissimilar from what you can see in uh, Crouching Tiger. But you know what? If you go back to the old days uh, of, of martial arts film and kung fu movies, it had all been done before. It had all been done before, yeah. I sat and watched a couple of films that really were influential. Uh, Zoo uh, Warriors of Mystic Mountain, which was fabulous. It was a real Wizard of Oz kind of Chinese film. Yeah. Do you and remember who had, directed that? I or? do not remember no. at the time. Sui Hark maybe had something to do with it. And then there was a Taiwanese film called Swords of Fame. And they had this sword fight in midair. And I just, thought, well, you just yeah. can't top it. You can't top it. You can't top too, this. Yeah. So we did a little version of it. Yeah. And in the old days, you had all the you had all the masters with all their chi power, and they'd put their hands up and shoot rays at each other. Yeah. And I thought, well, you, we have yeah. to do that kind of thing in this film. Well, it's, it, I mean, in a way, you really are you're going to, at this point, take all the best of the stuff you've loved. And, and do it. Put and, it in and there. put it in. Now, Jack's back with us now. He's going to take <laughs> him out. Whoops. Carter breaks that gun, boy. Uh, Off he goes. See ya. And like I can say, Dennis spent a lot of time getting down this fight. This was a, a tricky fight for him. He, he was great here. I mean, this is not easy to do. And as I recall, we had very few accidents on the film, and I'm always yeah, thinking about have, that. Not too yeah. many. We had, you know, yeah. sprained ankles and nothing like the National Guard and Escape from New York running down that alley with those helmets <laughs> on. We had people going to the hospital because they, they couldn't see they anything. They couldn't see anything. And, <laughs> This is, I love this. He's just too heavy. And he's stuck. <laughs> and he's stuck. That was great. But this is this is the stuff. Yeah, we didn't we didn't really use wire work as much as trampoline. You were stuff. trampolining yeah, here, right? We were, yeah. Poor Jack. He can't get the, <laughs> can't get that guy off. He just can't do it. Oh, I love that. Onward goes. Uh, and this is where I thought that when it coming up here was where he really, he totally got this, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, he loved it. He he totally he grew got up. This. You see, he grew up with, with the all real those films. old style yeah. stuff. He was telling me how stuff. they used to put in, uh, they used to, to scratch on the film the rays of light that were coming up. When you were shooting that stuff in mm -hmm. close up, were mm -hmm. you just running stuff behind them, or how that was a rear screen? The rear screen, and, uh -huh. and, but were you and were you we dragging photo, we them? Photographed. Them. They were lying on their sides on boards. And you were moving the boards. We, yeah. We, yeah, we weren't moving the boards. Everything was still. We photographed the background going by. It's like an old-fashioned. So you stuff. you put that. That was on not a green screen, but a just a regular motion picture screen. Just okay. Like like you driving in a car. <clears throat> so they stood still. Yeah, they, they were, were still. Yeah. Then we did this whole uh, yes. magic fight, which uh, this they, again, this is the part that goes back to the real old kung fu movies. Back in the old days. When did they start making kung fu movies in, in well, uh, when, China? When cinema in Taiwan. began there. They and did. Because when was like the 30s? Probably in the 20s they made silent films there and in the 30s. Kung fu really goes back to their Western tradition like we had ours in the mm -hmm. Old West. Yeah. Kung fu came about, they explained to me, because the, the bigger, taller marauders from the north would come down to these villages and they'd kick butt. And the farmers couldn't defend themselves. So they'd come down, steal all their crops, take all their money and go away. So some of the monks got together and And they wouldn't out, let them have weapons, right? We figured or, out a fighting style using farm implements. That's uh, what all the stuff you're seeing. It's all based on hoes and right. rakes and shovels and sticks, and sticks. And stuff that you can grab. And it was all about uh, uh, getting the enemy so confused by your moves that he, that he becomes yours. Yeah. That's yeah. where this whole thing started. And when was that, in, in terms of history, when was that? 12th, 11th, 12th, 13th century. That's cool. And their tradition has never <clears throat> never really gone away. I mean, China is an amazing oh, civilization. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it incredible. continues to be to this day. You know, we're just pipsqueaks compared yeah. to how long they've been around. Yeah. Yeah. They've been through a lot of strange stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great history. Where is he? Wait! Come on. 
Yeah, I remember this is the last few days of our uh, of our shot shoot in the uh, set here, and we were trying to get done as quickly as we could. And it's the last little bit where we blew up the the, the, the Buddha and the skull. The set was coming down. apart. Oh now. boy. There's the this giant monster comes out and grabs him. <laughs> <laughs> she kicks him. <clears throat> you push him over, and then you're off into the elevator. <laughs> His office, low pants office. It's cooler up there from, from there. With you. Do you have a gun? I hope. Have a nice mid 80s. I can't, it's hard to remember back to what was going on in the in the mid 80s in terms of other, other what other influences, other styles yeah. going uh, swirling around us. <coughs> what were the big movies in the mid 80s? Uh, I remember Rambo 2? Yeah, it's Rambo. It's pretty big. That started uh, e. the action genre. E.T. Yeah. E. was, e. e. was two. Alien, Alien was happening. Now, Cameron was uh, on uh, James Cameron. He was on Escape. He, he on was escape. a matte painter. He was a matte painter. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Big old kiss. <laughs> and this is where we kind of came up with the idea of leaving it on you, actually, actually kissing the actress. And now we reveal you. Uh, I just thought it was the greatest. Just the greatest. But it sure, you surely are willing to be... <laughs> Foolish on screen. I just so just, love it. Because you got, and once you, we did, we talked about this a lot. Yeah, once you yeah. got it on, you got it on. You got it on for a while. She she rubs it off because we couldn't, you we don't want to keep the rest going. of the movie. Yeah, well, she finally picked up on it. You are flesh. I am. <laughs> That's a whole lot of fun. I remember <laughs> showing this to Cody when he was really little, and he just thought this was the greatest. It just, it just dazzled him. He just loved, I just loved the all this stuff, all yeah. this magic stuff. Yeah. Is it too much to ask, Thunder? Kill him for me! Or solve anything. But the thing that uh, uh, I always thought was, was really cool about this film was that everybody was willing to do kind of an Asian kung fu movie in, here in America. And, yeah. and the studio, I mean, I thought the, yeah, uh, that they got that was, they actually, that was cool. They actually got behind that. It really was cool. Maybe they thought it was going to yeah. be something else. It's straighter. Straighter. What did I never talk to Richter about? Did he ever see it? Did he ever? Yeah, he saw it. What do you think? I think he liked it. Good. I don't. It's hard to tell. You I know, hope he would. You know, people get. Uh, uh, they don't want to really tell you. Sometimes if they don't like. Yeah, it. Yeah, right. You know, it's tough for a writer. I mean, you've done that. What's oh, that sure. like? What's What's that feeling like when you write something that you feel pretty good about, and another director does it, and it just is. You got to realize, hey, it's his. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, after a point, it goes out of my hands. Yeah. Okay. I give it my best. I remember seeing Eyes of Laura Mars. I sat down and watched it. I thought, well. That's kind of the story I wrote, but you know what? That's his movie now. Right. You got I got to give it up. Right. And you, so you try to watch it objectively for what it is at that you time. You have to. And if you if you get angry and you say, "Oh, that's wrong," yeah. I would have done. Well, yeah, you're not gonna. Yeah. You're hurting yourself. Yeah. Because it's not my it's it. not my movie. After I finish writing, it's got to be him. It's got he's got to right. take it. He's got to get the actors. He's got to get all of that done. Right. Right. My job was to sit down on paper and craft it out the right. best of my ability. Right. Now, was Eyes of Laura Mars always something you didn't really plan on directing? I was attached to direct it, but, you know, when you're young like that, they'll tell you anything. Yeah, right. And they just dump you. Right, <laughs> right. And I kind of saw that coming. I was right. like, well, they're not going to let me do it. Why right. are they going to let me direct? So I that was anything. before Halloween that you oh, wrote yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they did They did Eyes of Laura Mars after Halloween, right? They had it. Uh, they shot that in 77, I believe. They released it in 78. So it was all around the same time. Right. But I, I was writing for a living back then. I had that. Uh, well, you, I think you were. Were you playing baseball back then? What were you doing? Uh, let's see. In so was late 70s. 70, late 70s. 70s. No, yeah. I was. No, I had moved to Colorado. I had finished playing baseball. Um, and I was writing. I was writing in Colorado. I started writing. And uh, just recently, a script that I wrote 26 years ago has, has got some new heat behind it. Somebody's interested in doing it. And I read it the other day, and boy, is it bad. <laughs> you know, you had one great idea once I meant to tell you. I... Oh, well, they did it this year. What's that? Gladiator. Remember? Oh, well, yeah, I know. Remember, right? I know. I mean, we... But the idea about the... Wasn't it the cat? Yeah, that's the one I they were interested in. Love that. Tom. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah, that's... What a great idea <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're interested in that Yeah, there is. Yeah. I was like, uh, and it's it's badly written, but it's not... It's got Maybe an idea. It's got some cheat. <laughs> <laughs> No, Gladiator is right. Yeah, now, you had it. That was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't bad. Um, 
I, I thought you did thing too. on the Pirates of the Caribbean. I thought was yeah. had some potential. Like, if it would have been done at the time, I think if if that now movies like those, if they if they get to the right director and the, direct, the director really feels good about it right. and sees something in it, they can. See, in my estimation, they can take a fairly weak script and they can turn it into something sure. good. So he's going nuts now. Yeah, is he the he, last left? Let's see. Point, I believe he's he is. Yeah, I think everybody now. else is. Uh, he's the last guy, and you guys are climbing from one set to the next. And this thing's falling apart now. He can't make it. That was a. That, this is a fairly dangerous moment, and he had that straw hat on. And he got a far enough away from the fire, but I was a little worried. What happens if that goes up, man? He's a goner. Where, where the fire coming, yeah. coming close to him. He's yeah. standing under it, and then he has to walk forward. Then it drops. Right. That's when you got to trust uh, your effects guys. You got to trust them. I remember once, I'll show you the part where you were running, and there's a squib on the wall, and you went by it, and he yeah. set it off too early. Yeah. And it, it was not a happy moment I for you. I remember you you were... You were pretty quiet. You were you were oh, mad. You were mad. Boy, well, and I, cause I, that's I can remember. Yeah, it's only been three or four times when I see you really get mad, and yeah, that one got you mad. And I remember I kind of I remember man. thinking, boy, oh boy, that was close. And you and it seemed like just it was turned just, white. You just, were just as just as you went by that thing, I thought yeah. he went off. <laughs> yeah. Did you they miss time then? I, you, I saw you turn around and start looking, and I thought, oh, I don't want to be that guy right now. And the same <laughs> same thing happened. There was a, there was a gal who was a stunt girl supposed to come flying through this door. They didn't install a breakaway door, and we had her on an air ram. Oh, no. We were on the other side. All I heard was, blammo! <laughs> what? No, what happened? Nothing happened. Now, she's kind of back there like this. I'm all right. <laughs> what? Uh, what was that on? That was on this was on movie. This? It was in the White Tiger scene. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding? Oh, God. So we're running through our, our set here, and we're getting down to the, to the scene I'm telling you about. Actually, it's coming up here in a couple seconds. There's my truck. My truck. <laughs> and you run in, and as you go by, uh, as you're making a circuitous route. This is yeah, along that wall. Along that wall. Yep. Uh, they come yep. to shoot, and we, we're we supposed to set off a squib. Now, here it comes, here in a second. Yep. And bang! Right, right there. Right there. And it's <laughs> a little early on there. A little I later. remember catching some of the flack. I, it's a good thing I kept, I kept on, oh. you know, I was really, I said, I'm going to. I got to build up speed here. I don't want to get slower as I go along. And when that went off, I for a second there I thought, uh oh, now this might not be draft. too good. Didn't you have some good moments on that? Yeah, yeah, there was some there was some stuff with that. They were very good. Um, Did you ever get very, in a hairy spot? Yeah, yeah. Did you? There was stuff there that was that I actually was partially responsible for. Sometimes not, but uh, it was just a, you know it it was one where. Everything had to be planned out you do as much as you could. Fire. But you really all fire. that happened there was was that it, you set the room on fire and you wait until you think you can handle it and until it looks the best. And sometimes I just waited too long. And, and there we you go were. into the room and I turned around one time and <laughs> I was the only one there. Everybody at the camera had melted. The camera guy was gone. The other actors were gone and I, I couldn't get back. What'd you do? I kept going forward, and uh, the room started to get really smoky, and I was in uh, you're big trouble. trouble. Yeah, I was in big trouble in Chicago. <laughs> oh man! And I I ran, I ran uh, down a hallway and used a lot of the techniques that they had taught us before the picture started, and it really saved my life because I was able to make it down to the end of the hallway, which I had no idea how long it was. It was uh, it was really long. But it was full of smoke, and finally I began to see a light, and I, I actually for a minute there said, you know, am I alive? Yeah, exactly. I made it. <laughs> and I broke the window and could breathe. Now, I'm fond of this ending scene because of the things that we've talked about earlier, your yeah. your response to her, and you're kind of hoping they're going to get together, but they don't. And, yeah. This... And all the goodbyes. I, I think this is sweet. And uh, then you're off and off and running. This is this is a. Uh, sorry, we haven't talked more about the movie, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way we are. <laughs> <laughs> you get to hear what it's like to to sit and reminisce about yeah. something. And um, we paid a lot more attention at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the beer's been good, and the cigarettes hadn't been stale. So, <laughs> but this was. I remember this. Uh, I, 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 and this was at the end of the movie. We shot yep. this, remember? And I yep. and I remember thinking at the time, I had a. It was a. It was like it was the feeling of the scene. It was a great experience. It was uh -huh. a blast. The people were blast. I had a great time with you, 
and uh, didn't know if it was going to. We didn't know. Does it didn't know if this was going to play or not? But we we, we Kim given looks it our especially best. fetching right there. She yeah, was, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always thought it was very heroic of you. You know, you knew uh, yeah. your character knew, he knew what he was, he was like. He knew who he was. I'm not any good at that. I'm not going to. But he wasn't going to let it bring him down. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. This was. This was. Nope. Eh, not in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm just delighted that that all of you committed to playing this. All of you, everybody committed to what they were doing. Yeah. Every committed to the story, yeah. the characters, the style. It was amazing to have that kind of. Uh, you, you didn't have anybody who was really playing in another film. No. Nope. Which occasionally that happens. You and in a movie like this, it. that's easy. That's I think that may not be something that's easily understood for for people who are thinking about mm -hmm. getting into this business. Mm -hmm. Is that a movie like this? It's if you don't have your if you if the director's not watching everybody and somebody important starts to play it, play different. it differently, a different movie, it all goes out the window. It goes out the window, big time. I remember we used the, uh, I can't remember what the name of the, the crane was on this. It was new at the time. so we, Oh, the gimbal? Was this a No, this wasn't a gimbal. I can't even remember what it was, but I was pretty impressed when we did a whole moving shot on you, and it was it was operated by kind of remote control wheels. Oh, this was a Luma, right? Is that it? A, was it a Luma crane? I don't remember the like names one, of these things. Well, you were always using stuff for the first time, too. I remember yeah. those days. You'd get, you'd get the first, I'd say, what is that thing? You'd, well, try it out. you tell me what, what was going on here. So we're going to finally come into my uh, my great singing here on the last uh, uh, the last song. I I uh, recorded this with my friend. Now check your voice out here. No, I'm the low guy. Because I was like, it was like, uh, I always thought it was like Jim Morrison. You had a Jim Morrison well, player, See, I always loved, I, loved oh, Jim Morrison. I loved, and Elvis's voice was, of course, that deep, yeah. round. Yeah. But I had to I had to kind of fake it because I had never had a good voice. But it's fun for people to hear your voice now talking, and because that's oh, what I've always heard. And then quacking I'd like always a duck. Heard, then I hear yeah. this, and it's like, what? Now who's that? Is that uh, Nick Castle Nick? Yeah. And, and Tommy Lee Wallace and yeah. myself are the three uh, the three singers in this. Yeah. And it's all the synth uh, synth stuff with some. Uh, Tommy Marshall. Did Tommy Marshall yeah. die? I don't. I don't I, know. Uh, Was it Drain or Tommy? I don't remember. One, well, somebody died. Um, and I you was told Tom. years later. And it might have been Tommy. I hope it wasn't. Maybe. If he sees this DVD, give me a call. He's no, good. I'm not dead. Kurt, what's wrong? <laughs> <on? laughs> yeah, there was there was a Eddie Lee. He and I went to the same uh, high school. Eddie Lee Volker. You did? Yeah. Well, I we didn't found know. that out years later. I didn't I didn't, know didn't know that at the time. Well, it's, really, it's certainly been fun sitting around and. That's yeah, great. With you. It's great to see you this? as always, and and uh, I really haven't seen this movie for, oh, I mean, a long. I don't remember the last time I saw this. Might have been, it might have been when it came out. And from now on, you won't ever see it again. It's great to see it. It's great. I, I, I really, there's a lot about it that I loved, and I I like. I'm a I'm a big Trouble in Little China fan, but I'm I'm I like the movies we've done. I mean, I'll yeah, me stick too. by them. Yeah. And uh, they're not for all audiences. No. And I think that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I think that's cool. I think it's cool also that people would step up to the plate and put money behind a movie that oh, might awesome. not be that's for everybody. Awesome. I that's don't know really if I have the guts to do that, but I think that... Uh, and you can't, you know, I can't take anything away from 20th Century Fox really in the end. No. No matter how tough it was, they stood up. I don't think they knew how to promote it. Okay. Uh, I agree. And I also can say if they had known how to promote it, I don't know if it would have made a difference. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, uh, I think that it's great that it's found a uh, a cult audience. Yeah, I think it's neat. Uh, and, it's neat. Have, 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 and they and they love it. I'm, I think I enjoy those movies more than any of the other ones. Do you? Yeah. I like it when people come up and say Big Trouble in Little China or yeah. Escape from yeah. New York or Escape from L.A. Uh -huh. I'm finding that now. Yeah, that's starting that's to, come, starting to yeah. happen now. Yeah. I really really like that. They're now beginning to see what uh -huh. that was and how it how it why and how it compared to Escape from New York oh, and know. why it was slightly different but very much the same. All the things we we, we did talk about, but uh, uh, Big Trouble in Little China was was one that I when they come up and say. They, they, yeah, they, all yeah, they do yeah. is they look at you, right? They look at you, they point, and they go, big trouble in Little China. <laughs> They're a special breed. <laughs> cool deal. Yeah. All right, man. See, we'll ya. see you. See you guys later. <laughs>